right, Scott. So can you tell us what you do for TARC? Okay, uh, my name is Scott Hackley. I'm a staff research associate for TURK and um, my job is to do a lot of field research. So I'm involved in research on the algae along the shoreline in Lake Tahoe. Um, the uh, something called metaphyton, which is a type of algae that drifts along the bottom. So, so I study both metaphyton and paraphyton, which is attached algae. And um, I'm also involved in stream work. Uh, have done stream monitoring um, in the basin since the 1980s and um, uh, various other lab projects. So since you've been sampling at Tahoe since the 1980s, is there a distinct difference that you've seen in our environment um, since the 1980s to where we are now? Um, yeah, um, when I started in the 1980s, uh, the lake level was pretty high. Um, the water was usually really crystal clear and uh, uh, we didn't see some of the algae that we see along uh, the south shore of the lake. Um, so I, I think probably um, the major changes are um, some of the drifting algae that we see at the south shore and the presence of some of the, the newly um, arrived invasives, the invasive, invasive Asian clams. Um, when I used to snorkel back in the 1980s off of South Shore, I remember this one pipe and uh, along it, um, there were these real tiny clam shells and those were the native clams. And uh, those were the only um, uh, evidence of clams present that you could see. Now, if you go back to the same area, there's clam shells over much of the bottom at South Shore. So a really big difference with the um, uh, invasive Asian clam. Okay. So do you have maybe a favorite story or fun story uh, that you recall while working at Turk? Uh, let me think about that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember being out uh, stream sampling at midnight once. Um, at General Creek and uh, uh, there was this gigantic beaver right on the side of the creek. It was during a storm and uh, I came back um, uh, maybe an hour or so later and uh, he was sitting there but the pooled water that had backed up behind his dam was all blown out. So his dam was gone and uh, but he was still hanging out there. So the poor little guy was didn't have his pond of water anymore. Have you ever had moments uh, out in these big storms where you feared for your life? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, yeah, there's been times where, the, particularly with the winds, if you're out there and the, uh, you know, the trees, at times you can hear trees uh, falling in the forest and uh, so branches and, and tree limbs, things falling are a definite hazard and um, uh, you know i think those those have been the main times uh, there was a time during the flood of 1997 when my wife uh, kind of kept me home uh, at at night she didn't want me going out during the middle of the, the flood and uh, that was a good call <laughs> <laughs> okay so um in the light of everything that's happening um, in our world right now and potentially maybe for students who are interested in getting into um, environmental conservation and uh, field studies at Lake Tahoe, do you have any advice for grad students, high school students? Yeah, I, I would just say follow your passion if, if what you you know you really want to um, um, go for something and in a future job, um, you're really interested in something, try and learn all you can about it. Um, just increase your passion about it. And, uh, you know, don't, don't give up on it. And, um, you know, I think enthusiasm shows in, in what you do. And, and uh, um, I think it's a, a, a characteristic that employers really appreciate, um, just your enthusiasm and the level of knowledge that you can um, bring uh, to your field. So just just follow your passion, I think. Awesome. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay.
I think that beaver was probably just hanging out and waiting for his moment to rebuild his dam. Yeah, probably. <laughs> it was big too. So, really? Yeah, yeah. 